With the Blackhawks just one game away from the Stanley Cup, they returned to the Olympia on April 16th. Detroit goalie Terry Sawchuk had been injured in Game 5 and was replaced by capable backup Hank Basson. Game 6 was anticipated to be like the previous two games in Detroit, and for a while, it was. Detroit scored first on a goal by Parker McDonald on assists from Howe and Del Vecchio. They carried this lead into the second period and were on a power play threatening to expand their lead when Hawk penalty killer Reggie Fleming scored the biggest goal of his career, intercepting a pass and beating Basson for a shorthanded goal to tie the game. Reggie Fleming turns out to score what is the critical goal in Game 6 and maybe in, in Black Hawks history. Here was a role player, a guy that Rudy Pillis didn't put on the ice except in special situations, and a guy who wanted to play all the time. His role was a penalty killer, and the Hawks were trailing, and Detroit with a power play in game six. Reggie gets the puck and puts it in the net, and all of a sudden, the game is tied, and the Olympia is stunned. The Red Wings suddenly realize, oh, wait a minute, we were leading, we have a chance to put this series back into Chicago for game seven, and all their fans think, uh-oh, they scored. What's going on here? Here come the Hawks, literally. This is what keys the rally. They were ahead of us, one to nothing. They were on the power play. Uh, could have been two to nothing after that two-minute power play. But Reggie stealing the puck and scoring kind of neutralized that power play. And the momentum came back to uh, our club. And uh, Detroit, you could just see them sag after that. And we played the rest of the game uh, really outskating him at, uh, at every turn. It's Del Vecchio, Stasiak, and Howe. With Young and Gregan on the defense. Puck is back to Young. Young lost it to Hayes. He's got a clear cut breakaway. Nobody near him. Running the ball for Chicago. He shoots. Oh, and Hayes will make the save on Hayes. Running on goal. From this point on, the Hawks took the momentum and took the lead before the end of the second period on a goal by Ab McDonald, knocking in a rebound off a brilliant rush by Bobby Hull, with Stan Makita also getting an assist. Starting the final period, Detroit appeared to run out of steam. Chicago again, Arbor off the boards to Warren. And Tonovo is checked by Ab McDonald. Ab McDonald just failed to break through, and Detroit hand it right to Makita. Going in on goal. He shoots another try. And the Hawks scored early in the period on a goal by Eric Nestorenko from Todd Sloan and Pierre Pilat. The game was then busted wide open on an unassisted goal by Jack Tex Evans to make it 4-1. to one. It was Tex's first goal of the year. Evans gets a break, here's a chance, he scores for Chicago Evans! Into the empty net. And that makes it 4-1 to one as Basson was hauled out and Evans raced down to score for Chicago to make it 4-1. to one. He was put in the clear at the Detroit blue line, he fired through and fired the puck into the net, and Chicago now leads 4 1. With Glenn Hall unflappable in goal, the Hawks were in firm control of the game. Dragon tucked it out to Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio, a flip pass to Howe to Stasiak. Three of them over the line. Del Vecchio to Stasiak, the shot. Hall caught it and holds it for a faceoff in the Chicago zone. And we've played nine minutes and 47 seconds of the third period, Chicago 4, Detroit 1. The Blackhawks appear to be playing a very relaxed type of game. That fourth goal seemed to set them right up, and they're playing heads-up hockey all the way, whereas the Red Wings are trying their best, but they just can't get organized. A shot puts it wide on the Chicago net from the blue line. Finally, the icing on the cake was provided by Kenny Warham, bursting through the Detroit defense to make the final score five to one. By Evans, trying to work in front. He left it there and Warham gets a break for Chicago, racing down the ice. 
Right in on goal. He should the score. Oh, for Chicago. And a first up breakaway. And it's five to one for the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks really are pulling away here. They started it early in the second period when they tied the score, and they've never looked back since. With 2-1 at the end of the second, and the Hawks have added three unanswered goals in the third period when they've held the Red Wings just as if they were in a vice. And I remember listening to the third period, and uh, uh, he said, my dad said when uh, they scored that fifth goal, he said, that's it, they can't catch him. And then he went on about how the Blackhawks hadn't won a Stanley Cup in 23 years, uh, since 1938 when he was a teenager. Glenn Hall wasn't sure the Hawks were going to win the Cup until there were 10 seconds left. Then he knew it was in the bag. Up comes Patrick McDonald of Detroit over the line. Basco covers the Detroit player, jams him in on the board. Fontaine sending it right to Earl Balfour of Chicago. He shot it down the ice. Races after it himself. Going in, took a shot on the short side. And we have 48 seconds left. As McGregor comes racing down the ice for Detroit, he's stopped by Vasco, but he carried on as it deflected off him. McGregor of Detroit trying to pass it out in front. He's knocked down. For only the third time in team history, the Blackhawks were Stanley Cup champions. It was a... Uh... A situation that uh, really deservedly so for the senior statesmen on our team. They were the guys that really got the job done for us. Oh my, well, you can't believe how happy the guys were. You know, here we are. We're this is this is a hockey club that, that's been in the bottom of the league for a hundred years, and now we're, we're Stanley Cup champs. And the guys were really elated. They were just well, they were just full of joy. We, we were basking in it, but uh, those veterans, they were the guys that won the game for us. Here's a, here's a 20-year-old kid from Saskatchewan, and he's playing for the Montreal Canadiens. And now, I, now I'm, I'm skating around the Olympia holding the Stanley Cup in my hands, and I'm saying, I can't believe this. Here I am, I'm 27 years old, or whatever it was, and, I, and, I, and I'm, 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 I'm the captain of the club, and I'm holding the Stanley Cup. It was just unbelievable, and I, I'm saying to myself, I hope my mother's watching. presentation has been made. Eddie Litzenberger is carrying the trophy. They certainly are a happy crowd, and rightly so, and they're headed to the dressing room now.